I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Tasha Punyanira Madi, co founder of Alpha Finance Labs. Tasha, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here today. Hi, Ashton. Thank you for having me too. I'm really excited to dive into Alpha Finance. The DeFi world inside of cryptocurrency has been really crazy recently, and I know your team is working hard to stay on top of what's going on with the latest in DeFi, help grow the space. And I would love for you to just kick it off with a high-level overview and, and what is the current focus is of Alpha Finance Labs, and then we can dive into the details. Sure, yeah. So Alpha Finance is a DeFi lab. And what that means is we are building and incubating many DeFi products and DeFi projects. So the end goal that we're looking to to achieve, right, is to create um, a DeFi ecosystem. So pretty much like a banking system on blockchain that will not only serve retail users in DeFi, but also institutional users. So definitely need to, you know, achieve, achieve a lot of milestones to tap into their large um, institutional clientele that, that, you know, we have now in traditional finance. Definitely. And yeah, there's a lot of infrastructure that's going to be needed to bring DeFi up to speed with and traditional finance is so, so intricate. Um, and there's a lot of pieces to that. What are the pieces that your team is most focused on right now? Yeah, so we just launched Alpha Oracle Aggregator, um, as well as Alpha Homura V2, which is the, the product um, that also uses Alpha Oracle Aggregator. So, you know, when you talk about infrastructure, you know, that ties, you know, really closely to Alpha Oracle Aggregator. And what it is, is it's the first, you know, Oracle Aggregator in DeFi in, in, in a sense that, you know, typically a DeFi project would use one Oracle, um, be it, you know, Oracle A or, or Oracle B, C, D, right? I don't want to name the names uh, um, in the show here, but, you know, that's, that's a typical route um, mm -hmm. in which one project uses one Oracle. And that's because the Oracle itself already aggregates from multiple providers. So it's still not centralized anyways. Um, it would ag aggregate a lot from the other providers already. But the reason that we decided to go with the Alpha Oracle aggregator, which is what we created ourselves, is that, you know, there's still some, you know, downsides with using one data mm -hmm. Oracle in our opinion, because uh, it limits the scalability, it limits the flexibility, which are really needed nowadays in DeFi. As you see, DeFi has grown really fast and also grown beyond Ethereum. We always have to keep you know, a look out into which chain, which you know, layer two solutions we want to go into. And that requires a lot of flexibility and scalability needed on DeFi project side. Mm -hmm. So you know, with Alpha Oracle Aggregator, it ensures security scalability and flexibility so the three key areas that we want to optimize as we grow the whole alpha finance out mm -hmm. definitely and it's great to be able to integrate multiple protocols together because as you mentioned there is ethereum the main uh, the majority of DeFi trading lending is going on on the ethereum blockchain it, it seems but there are those issues the scalability issues especially um, when you need to bring in oracles which some people that are just getting into decentralized finance aren't always familiar exactly with you know, the point of needing oracles or what is an oracle and how does it apply to trading in a decentralized way. If you could elaborate on that a little bit more, um, I would think it would shed some light into why the oracle is needed uh, for the aggregator. Yeah, so imagine you know, one single DeFi product being a line of code. Um, these line of codes added together called smart contract. So this smart contract doesn't know what price, you know, Ethereum or, or Rap Bitcoin or, you know, Alpha is, right? So if the DeFi product itself supports um, these tokens, let's say with Alpha Homora, it supports a uh, lending of ETH USDT, for instance, right? So with these two assets, the product itself in the line of codes will not be able to know what's the current price right now. So it has to, you know, need, need to have a way to, to pull the data from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so the line of code will say that, okay, if you need the, to, to get this data, then you pull from this alpha Oracle aggregator. And then the alpha Oracle aggregator, which is another smart contract, will be the one that aggregates the price from multiple data oracles that we work with, which right now we are working with Chainlink and Band Protocol mm -hmm. um, to, to gather all those information. And then, you know, finally have the data that is needed on the product itself. Very cool. Thank you for that 
explanation. And yeah, it's definitely going to be needed. And Chainlink and Band Protocol are both uh, seem to be growing exponentially right now in their use case because so many DeFi platforms need uh, oracles for these price feeds. Um, and, and you did mention before that you're looking at blockchain uh, agnostic, whether it's not just Ethereum, but as the DeFi ecosystem expands to other blockchains as well, it might make it harder to manage uh, a single oracle. Um, can you talk about, you know, with regards to the current oracles that you're working with, uh, is it majority on Ethereum or are you already branched out into other blockchains? Yeah, so the oracles that we work with are on Ethereum and also the other blockchains as well. Uh, and which is also why we we are comfortable with these oracles that we decided to go with. Uh, in terms of Alpha Finance products itself, we are on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain, and then we're looking to grow into a number of more chains going forward, which have already been supported by these uh, oracle providers that we're working with. That's great. And I was reading into the Uniswap, which is one of the most popular decentralized exchanges right now. They just moved to version three. It's supposed to be have a lot more functionality. Uh, the, the liquidity seems like it's still merging over right now, and I'm not sure if it's fully been merged yet. But is that something that changes uh, how the Oracle aggregator works uh, for Alpha? Um, are you helping? You know, aiming to to help grow Uniswap and the other decentralized exchanges uh, to bring these oracles to those kind of exchanges to help them grow even faster. Mm, good question. So, you know, Uniswap V3 also comes with an improved TWAP or time weighted average price oracle, which gives you know it, it has different pros and cons comparing to the typical uh, data oracle you know, that, that we use, let's say from Chainlink and Band Protocol. So there are different pros and cons, uh, but definitely it's something that we can also, we're looking to 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 add Uniswap V3 TWAP as another Oracle in Alpha Oracle Aggregator too, because it has different pros and cons. Um, the cons that, you know, Chainlink and Band Protocol may have more than Uniswap TWAP um, can be addressed by the pros of Uniswap V3 TWAP. But then that also means that there are some cons with uh, adding this TWAP as well, so we need to make sure we adjust uh, to to you know make sure it's all consistent. So that's in terms of how we're looking to you know bring or, or merge the the integration between Uniswap V3 TWAP and also Alpha Oracle Aggregator. Um, but in terms of the product itself, you know that doesn't change how Uniswap V3 works. That doesn't change how Alpha products works. It works just the same, and we're also looking to support Uniswap V3 as a product on our product. Mm -hmm. That's great to know, Tasha. And you know, Uniswap has just become so popular. I remember back in the summer of 2020 when Uniswap V2, you know, they did an airdrop for the early users and there really wasn't a lot of value locked in these decentralized protocols. I think it's exponentially higher now. How has your team sh made its way through the shift from DeFi growing so exponentially? Was this a product that you had designed when you know the value locked was a lot smaller and has the strategy of going to market with the oracle aggregator shifted as the exponential growth in the value locked in DeFi uh, moved so quickly since last year yeah so once you know the, the DeFi summer came and you farming comes and, and we saw that you know this is an incentive structure that is not going to go away soon right once one project has it, the other projects would all also need to have it unless they don't want to bootstrap liquidity, which all the projects would want to do that. So once we saw that huge opportunity, then we decided to create Alpha Homora, um, which is the first leveraged yield farming product in DeFi. And it has grown significantly. So it also uh, was growing with DeFi as DeFi total value lock grows, Alpha Homora also grows. And that's also pretty much led us to you know, why we built Alpha Homora V2, which is an expanded version, um, a lot more functionalities, a lot more, you know, AMMs that we work with. And we just launched that yesterday. So, so it's a pretty um, busy month here at Alpha Finance. Definitely. And congratulations on that. And I will definitely check out that, that farming uh, from Alpha. And I'm guessing that somehow ties into the Alpha token. I was looking into the, the tokenomics of mm -hmm. Alpha. Maybe you could touch on you know, the main functionality of the Alpha token inside the platform. Is it required for uh, you know, Hamora and for the Oracle aggregator? And, and does it create a sustainable ecosystem uh, inside of Alpha? 
Yep. So it ties, you know, very closely to the whole alpha ecosystem in terms of usage and also in terms of value accrual. So if you have alpha right now, you can stake your alpha tokens on this site called tokenomics.alphafinance.io, which is on Ethereum. What that does is that it allows you to accrue more alpha um, by staking, right? And these additional alpha that you're accruing is coming from the protocol fees that we collect from Alpha Homora, you know, V1, V2, and on, on BSC as well. And if you ask, you know, where, where do we charge the protocol fees, that's pretty much comes from 10% of the borrowing interest rate that the leveraged you farmers are paying. So it ties, you know, very nicely in terms of the higher usage it, 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 the products grows, the more value accrual it goes back to Alpha stakers. And the funds that Alpha stakers are staking, you know, these are the funds that are, you know, additional insurance for the whole Alpha ecosystem. So each Alpha product has its own, you know, insurance protocol or insurance plat or insurance parameters already. But if additional insurance is needed, you know, then um, this additional funds in Alpha staking would be the cushion for that. Mm -hmm. That's very exciting. Uh, and that's live right now. Um, I'm guessing that uh, you guys are continuing to work on it. You mentioned there, there's future versions. Can you give a glimpse into? I know you just you just made this announcement. And what are the like uh, a glimpse into the next steps over the next month or two on what your team is focused on now that you've made this release? Yeah. So you know, as I mentioned in the in the beginning, that Alpha Finance is a DeFi lab, and we need a a model or an infrastructure that will allow us to grow and scale into a, a full-fledged DeFi lab, right? Without adding, you know, fixed costs to our team, without adding centralization to our team. So we are announcing, you know, that uh, this month in terms of what that is and, and how will that really much bring Alpha Finance Lab to be a full-fledged DeFi lab. And we're pretty much looking forward to that. And, you know, we've been working on that for several months and have been giving it quite low because we wanted to make sure we, you know, got everything right before we announced to the community. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We'll, we'll definitely be looking forward to, to that announcement. And, you know, we are running short on time, but I want to look way down the road for Alpha Finance. And I want to hear what you think would be one of the top key success factors for uh, having Alpha Finance be a long-term success with widespread adoption uh, throughout DeFi. Yeah, so I would say long-term success that I imagine are more of three angles. One angle is within Alpha Finance Lab itself. It's an ecosystem, like a full-fledged ecosystem, right? Multiple products that we build, multiple products that we incubate are working together. Value accrual is very strong. Um, and pretty much it's, it's an ecosystem that you cannot just fork, right? Because it has an inherent value that grows with it. So that's number one. The second one is that we are looking to also grow our you know, ties with institutional clients because we know that there's a huge demand for institutions to tap into these deals in DeFi and also to, to move with the, the technology, right? So we also want to make sure that we have the, the, the materials and the products, the infrastructures ready to be able to support that. And then the third is that, you know, while retail right now in DeFi may not um, contribute much to, to the whole DeFi ecosystem, I, I, I am imagining that, you know, as DeFi grows and if DeFi will, you know, exist more and more concurrently with the traditional finance, then retail would need to have the right education, the right, you know, risk, understanding of risk, understanding of rewards mm -hmm. um, to make sure that they invest accordingly. So we're looking to make sure we educate that a lot more through our UX UI, through our educational programs, um, and make sure that we tap into, you know, not only just institutional clients, but also the mass retail that haven't adopted DeFi yet. Mm -hmm. Definitely, there's so much more adoption to come. Uh, the growth has been exponential, but it's still less than uh, a small percentage of 1%. Um, of even just of the cryptocurrency industry. So I'm excited to watch how Alpha Labs uh, grows you know, uh, along this time. And for the viewers that also want to follow along with Alpha Finance and, and those announcements that you said you're going to be making, what's the best way for them to get involved in the community and uh, start learning more about the products? Yeah, so Twitter would be the first place if you want to you know, hear the, the quick updates on anything. It's Alpha Finance Lab on Twitter. 
So, so that would be, you know, the, the updates. Um, if you want to talk to the team or you want to talk to the community, then we also have a group on Discord and Telegram. So all these links are also on the Twitter site. So you would be able to, you know, access these links easily. Sounds great, Tasha. I will leave the link to Twitter and uh, Alpha Finance site in the description box below for the viewers as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on to talk about Alpha Finance. Congratulations on the recent announcements. All the best moving forward in the DeFi space. And let's follow up in the near future. Thank you, Ashton.